locked out of your Instagram account by hackers, part of a new scam, and how the crooks aren't just after money. A police chase interrupts the funeral of an 11-year-old South Bay boy, how his former teachers are supporting his family. Comparing homelessness in the four most populous states, what's working and what's not. Hunger and food insecurity reach every corner of San Diego, and that includes our military families. Is cattle really the biggest source of methane emissions in the U.S.? We verify. Meet the three-year-old who leaves no can behind. News 8 starts right now. Imagine being locked out of your own Instagram account as hackers demand money. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Marcella Lee. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. One influencer says this just happened to her and she didn't think it was a scam at first because the message came through a friend's account and she didn't know that friend had been hacked. News 8's Heather Hope has more on how the influencer got scammed out of her Instagram account and her warning to others. Dolores the Explorer on Instagram thought she was doing her friend a favor by doing a testimonial video for him, promoting how you can make $10,000 fast. But little did she know that her friend's Instagram account was hacked and that she soon gave hackers full access to her account. Guys, my Instagram has been hacked. Upset and shocked, 19-year-old TikTok user Dolores Cachola Tapia shared to her 1.3 million followers that she no longer had access to her Instagram account under the handle Dolores the Explorer. Seemed legit at first, and so yes, did an ad nice. video, which was really stupid to me because now it helps them on tricking people. Dolores, who lives in Hawaii, says on Sunday her friend reached out to her about if she wanted to do a testimonial video for his new trading company. This particular friend in particular um, actually loves stock trading, so I know this person. Dolores said she had no idea that her friend's account had been hacked on Instagram, so she sent him this video. I somehow invested a thousand dollars and I got ten thousand dollars back. Through a chorus of back and forth direct messages, Dolores says next her friend's account asked her to add this Forex trade email to her account profile. I mistakenly put the email on my own Instagram handle and Three minutes later, bam, it was taken over. Just like that, Dolores' account access was gone and she was locked out. I was hooked in sync. That's, that's what happened. Even though Dolores did not give up any money or banking info, the hackers demanded she pay $500 to get her account back and messaged all her followers that she was kidnapped and needed money. Unfortunately, one follower did pay up $300. Looking back, I felt like maybe I was too greedy for things or maybe I was just too naive. Dolores is struggling to contact Instagram and regain access to her account. In a statement from Facebook, who owns Instagram in part reads, we know that losing access to your account can be a distressing experience. We have sophisticated measures in place to stop bad actors in their tracks before they gain access to accounts, as well as measures to help people recover their accounts. Turn on two-factor authentication for additional security. Dolores says she now wishes she would have texted or called her friend before adding this new email to her IG account. This is like actually serious. Like it wasn't that it just affected me, it affected like all of my friends and innocent people. The good news is that Facebook is looking into Dolores' Instagram account and they're working to have it restored back to her. Heather Hope, News 8. All right, Heather, thanks. A man arrested after a pursuit that ended inside of a church appeared in an El Cajon courtroom this afternoon. Jose Espinosa is facing charges of DUI and evading arrest. This chase started last Thursday with a traffic stop in Del Zura. Prosecutors say deputies learned Espinosa had a felony warrant and he took off. The pursuit took them to the Church of the Most Precious Blood in Chula Vista, where they say Espinosa bailed from his SUV and ran inside that church during a funeral service and was arrested right there on the altar. He is being held on $190,000 bail and is due back in court on December 2nd. People who are at that funeral for an 11 year old boy say the uproar and arrest only added to the pain of losing him. News 8's Shannon Handy spoke to the boy's former teachers and has more on how they're coming together to help support his family. What happened during Nicholas Curiel Maldonado's funeral was devastating for his loved ones, including classmates of his who were there. Nicholas's former teachers from Hawking Steam Charter School say given all his family has gone through, they want to do everything they can to help. He was just really helpful and kind and friendly to everyone. He was really creative, an amazing artist. Nicholas Curiel Maldonado's former teachers have fond memories of the 11-year-old, saying his death has been extremely difficult for everyone who knew him. 
I've been lucky enough to talk to my class about it um, and to be able to tell them uh, the good things about Nicholas and things that he would do and continue to do, how he would draw and how he would come to school ready to learn. And so we talked about how can we continue to live on um, through his legacy. Nicholas died from a brain tumor last month. On Thursday, loved ones gathered for his funeral were during the service a felon stormed in after leading law enforcement on a wild chase. Inside. Everyone inside the church, including Nicholas's teachers and classmates, were evacuated. So sorry. Deputies later arrested the man at the altar. One of the craziest parts was when it was all happening. No one really knew what was going on in the church. It was just already, it was such an emotional day. Um, and to have that added level of fear um, was just terrible. There were students very upset in that moment. Following the ordeal, fourth grade teacher Quincy Barnes and her co-workers felt compelled to set up a GoFundMe page to help Nicholas's family, who they say had already been dealing with more heartache than any parent ever should. Nicholas was one of three boys. A few years ago, at the age of 10, his oldest brother was diagnosed with cancer and had to have his leg amputated. They're just the kindest, most loving people, and obviously no one deserves for anything like this to happen to them, but it just seems so unfair for this family in particular. Nicholas's teachers hope the community support will help with their emotional and financial needs, saying while they can't change what happened, they can help ease the burden, all while keeping Nicholas's memory alive. We just want the family to know that we love them, that they are part of our community, and we want to do as much as we can for them. It's a huge loss for us and his family. If you'd like to help the Coriel Maldonado family, we have a link to that GoFundMe page. It's up on our website. Just go to CBS8.com and click on this story. Thanks, Shannon. Today, the County Board of Supervisors voted unanimously to support a congressional bill to ban new offshore oil drilling in Southern California. This comes after last month's oil spill near Huntington Beach that killed wildlife and temporarily shut down Orange County beaches, even left tar balls as far away as our beaches here in San Diego County. North County Congressman Mike Levin introduced the bill back in May. However, if passed, the bill would have no effect on the 1,200 existing offshore wells in California waters. Hundreds of non-tenured faculty at UC San Diego are planning to walk off the job tomorrow. They're joining thousands of lecturers and adjunct professors across the nine UC campuses on a two-day strike. Their union says it has filed seven unfair labor practice charges with the state over the last two years over wage, workload, and paid family leave concerns. In a statement, UC officials say they are disappointed with the decision to pursue a strike. Negotiations between the two sides are ongoing. With Thanksgiving next Thursday, there are many in San Diego who worry they won't even be able to put food on the table. Shockingly, a very large percentage of those who seek help from food banks are active duty military members and their families. In this On the Home Front report, News 8's Tim Blodgett looks into why some service members can't afford food. Though it's one of the best funded institutions in the entire world, there are still active duty service members that go hungry. Here at the San Diego Food Bank, they feed thousands of military families who face food insecurity. <laughs> From plump Thanksgiving turkeys to jars of peanut butter, the San Diego Food Bank puts groceries on the shelves of those who need them most. One of their many distribution programs provides food to retired and active duty service members. In 2020, the bank distributed over 5 million pounds of food to military families. That's a 54% increase from last year. San Diego Food Bank estimates that we serve roughly around 40,000 military families, dependents, veterans, retirees um, throughout all of our county. That is an astonishing number. According to a study from Feeding America, 125,000 active duty service members have trouble feeding their families. In addition, many of those who go hungry receive a housing allowance from the military, usually making them ineligible for the Supplemental Assistance Program, or SNAP. The biggest thing to adjust to was the higher cost of living. So I'm from, we both are from a smaller town in Louisiana, so the lifestyle there for cost of living is a lot lower than what you have here. Ashley Johnson moved to Camp Pendleton with her husband back in 2019. She struggled to find work in California as her certifications weren't valid in the state. Her husband making around $40,000 a year in the Marine Corps. The pay scale for a petty officer in the Navy is less, anywhere between $25,000 and $33,000 a year. That's the same salary for a seaman based in Louisiana or San Diego. Then we put them into the military. We move them far away from their support systems. We have astronomical spousal unemployment, and we ask them to manage their money. 
I think we need to do a better job of ensuring that spouses who want to work can work. Kathy Bradshaw is the Vice President of the Support the Enlisted Project, or STEP, an organization who provides emergency financial assistance to active duty service members. She says it comes down to individual budgeting and the United States military giving proper financial resources to their own soldiers. And I think that includes helping with uh, affordable childcare, teaching people how to set and achieve financial goals. My feeling is there's more than one way to address any issue that we could bring forward. Tim Blodgett, News 8.